Gordon Freeman in the flesh. Or rather, in the hazard suit, I took the liberty of relieving you of your weapons. Most of them were government property. As for the suit, I think you've earned it. The border world, then, is in our control for the time being, thanks to you. Quite a nasty piece of work you managed over there. I am impressed. That's why I'm here, Mr. Freeman. I have recommended your services to my uh, employers. And they have authorized me to offer you a job. They agree with me that you have limitless potential. You've proved yourself a decisive man, so I don't expect you'll have any trouble deciding what to do. If you're interested, just step into the portal and I will take that as a yes. Otherwise, well, I can offer you a battle you have no chance of winning. Rather an anticlimax after what you've just survived. Time to choose. Wisely done, Mr. Freeman. I will see you up ahead. choose. It's time to choose. Well, it looks like we won't be working together. No regrets, Mr. Freeman. So, Corporal Shepard, we meet at last. Please don't think that I've been avoiding you. A great many matters require my attention in these troubled times. I do hope you understand. And now I require a further indulgence on your part. I cannot close my report until every loose end has been tied up. The biggest embarrassment has been Black Mesa facility, but I think that's finally taken care of itself. Quite so. But there is still the lingering matter of witnesses. I admit I have a fascination with those who adapt and survive against all odds. They rather remind me of myself. If for no other reason, I have argued to preserve you for a time. While I believe a civil servant like yourself understands the importance of discretion, my employers are not quite so trusting and rather than continually subject you to the irresistible human temptation of telling all, we have decided to convey you somewhere you can do no possible harm and where no harm can come to you. I'm sure you can imagine there are worse alternatives. and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. Not that I wish to imply you have been sleeping on the job. No one is more deserving of a rest, and all the effort in the world would have gone to waste until... Well, let's just say your hour has come again.
The right man in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world. So wake up, Mr. Freeman. Wake up and smell the ashes. <laughs> yeah! You did it! Come on, Gordon. We've got to get out of here. Maybe we still have... Time, Dr. Freeman? Is it really that time again? It seems as if you only just arrived. You've done a great deal in a small time span. You've done so well, in fact, that I've received some interesting offers for your services. Ordinarily, I wouldn't contemplate them, but these are extraordinary times. Hmm? <laughs> Rather than offer you the illusion of free choice, I will take the liberty of choosing for you. If and when your time comes round again. I do apologize for what must seem to you an arbitrary imposition, Dr. Freeman. I trust it will all make sense to you in the course of... Well, I'm really not at liberty to say. In the meantime, this is where I get off. Tell me, Dr. Freeman, if you can. You have destroyed so much. What is it exactly that you have created? Can you name even one thing? I thought not. Freeman. I realize this moment may not be the most convenient for a heart to heart, but I had to wait until your friends were otherwise occupied. There was a time they cared nothing for Miss Vance, when their only experience of humanity was a crowbar coming at them down a steel corridor. When I plucked her from Black Mesa, I acted in the face of objections that she was a mere child and of no practical use to anyone. I have learned to ignore such naysayers when quelling them hmm, was out of the question. Still, I am not one to squander my investments. And I remain confident she was worth far more than the initial appraisal. That's why I must now extract from you some small repayment owed for your own survival. 
See her safely to White Forest, Dr. Freeman. I wish I could do more than keep an eye on you, but I have agreed to abide by certain restrictions. Well, now listen carefully, my dear. When you see your father, relay these words. Prepare for unforeseen consequences. Impressive work, Ms. Vance. Gordon... Freeman? Gordon... Freeman? <laughs> Ms. Vance, you wouldn't need all that to imprison Gordon Freeman. So, who are you? Perhaps what I am is not as important as what I can offer you in exchange for coming all this way. Some believe the fate of our worlds is inflexible. My employers disagree. They authorize me to nudge things in a particular direction from time to time. What would you want nudged, Miss Vance? The Combine off Earth. I want the Combine off Earth. Ah, that would be a considerably large nudge. Too large, given the interests of my employers. Well, you asked. What if I could offer you something you don't know you want? Dad? What? Is that me? What is this? What's happening? We are in the future. This is the moment where you watch your father die. Unless... What? Unless what? Unless... You were to take matters into your own hands. Release your father, Miss Lance. As a consequence of your action, this entity will continue, and this entity will not. Right. So, he's okay, right? He lives. My dad lives. You are aware that you've proven yourself to be of extraordinary value. A previous hire has been unable or unwilling to perform the tasks laid before him. We have struggled to find a suitable replacement until now. No! I, I just want to go home. Send me home! I'm afraid. You misunderstand the situation, Ms. Vance. 